today to explain what it is, why we oppose it, and what we can do about it. Um, you don't, I'm going to be going into a lot of details about the legislation and um, what could change if it gets overturned. You don't have to take notes unless you want to. There's a backgrounder that we can email to all of you. It's, it's several pages and it's just for internal use, just to educate yourself. Also, every town has a really great one-page fact sheet, which you can share with anyone, just hand out to people. Um, and that will be available on your agenda. There's a QR code um, on the back page. That goes to the link tree for our group, which is also on our website, our guide on our Facebook page. That link tree is updated constantly. It has all our upcoming events, but it also links to online documents that we can use. One of them is this fact sheet. So you don't have to write down a lot of details today. It's, it's all gonna be information that you'll have access to later. Um, one other note is that I'm gonna be using the words permit and license interchangeably. The statute talks about a license, but it's the, we commonly call it a, a concealed carry permit. Okay, permitless carry, what is it? So you wanna to go to the next slide. Yes, constitutional carry is what the governor is calling permitless carry because apparently to him every day is opposite day. It's nothing to do with the constitution. <laughs> It's definitely gonna be introduced in this legislative session. Um, we can explain what it means, permitless carry, what it means, it has nothing to do with the Constitution, but what it specifically means that there will no longer be a requirement in Florida to have a permit to carry a concealed weapon. Can we go to the next slide, please, thanks. So this is the current statute. Um, you need to be a resident, 21 years older, no physical infirmity. The important stuff is here. No felony convictions, no violent misdemeanor within three years and not subject to a domestic violence injunction, um, no like chronic drug use, and you've not been adjudicated incapacitated. And the last one is that you must demonstrate competency with a firearm through completion of certain firearm training safety courses, which is a little broad, but the these um, these things about whether, you know, these el eligibility requirements, except for the last one, are not new to this statute. They're already in Florida law. It's the, all the language about who can or cannot possess, not purchase, but possess a firearm. That's already in established Florida law. The thing that's different in the permitting law is this last one, that you must demonstrate competency. That is the only statute in Florida law that requires any kind of training, safety or otherwise, proficiency or safety, with a firearm. Um, also, in Florida law, the only, it's only purchases that go through a licensed dealer that require a background check. So if you buy a gun from a private seller or a friend, you don't have to go through a background check. This statute is the only one for, the only way that people who bought their guns through some other means will have to go through a criminal background check. Um, so there's a lot of people that own guns they did not get from a licensed dealer, and if they want to conceal carry them, they have to go through a criminal background check. If this is overturned, that goes away. We also expect that this will make law enforcement's job harder because there's gonna be potentially more people carrying concealed weapons and law enforcement will not know that. If they run a check on the guy's plates, they're not gonna know if the guy's a weapon or not. Guy, it's a gender neutral term the way I use it, sorry. Um, and there are also gonna be more untrained people, not unvetted, but also untrained running around in the community that law enforcement is interacting with, potentially with no information. Uh, the other important thing to notice is this FDACS. That's the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, FDACS. Uh, it's, that's the one that issued, the, or the agency that issues these permits. It's $55 to renew it every year, I think it's $45. Up until recently, we were lucky because the agriculture commissioner was Nikki Freed, who's a gun sense candidate, um, and now she's been replaced by a Republican. But even so, even while Nikki Freed was in charge of that office, her office issued hundreds of thousands of these permits every year across the state of Florida. There are now over 2.6 million concealed carry permits in the state of Florida, and there are almost 200,000 in Broward County. So it's not like it's hard to get. There's a lot of people who have these permits. So to sum it up, getting rid of this permitting process will remove the requirement about training, it will remove the requirement about background checks, it will make it law enforcement's job harder, and it's a step, a major step in dismantling the whole system of responsible gun and ownership in Florida, because this is a really important linchpin of that. Okay, next slide. 
So this is actually what I just said, sorry. So it eliminates the criminal history check. It's good to sum up again. There's no safety training required. There's no live fire training required. It makes law enforcement's job harder. And it's, you know, for responsible gun owners in Florida, this is stuff they're already doing. They, b they believe in and everybody should be doing it and it's not going to be required anymore and uh, that's not a good idea. Okay, so next slide Robin, sorry. Okay, so in a new Giffords poll, nearly 70% of respondents oppose permitless carry because it turns out nobody wants people walking around in their communities with a loaded weapon and potentially no background uh, check or training. The problem is a lot of people don't understand that that's what constitutional carry is, they've heard that term, um, or they don't know what the details of the law are and they don't understand what will happen when it's overturned. So it's our job to educate them and there's a few ways that we're doing this. So the first thing is we wanna educate our, well, I was just talking with Sri and Siddiqui about this. Um, the first thing is we wanna educate our legislators about this even before a bill is introduced. Um, we recently had the Broward delegation, legislative delegation, had a meeting here, um, and Moms Demand went and spoke. I'm gonna hand over to these <coughs> badasses who hijacked the meeting and got a bunch of awesome video. Um, the problem is in Broward County, um, our legislators are already on our side, so we can't stop there. They can give us some good advice about who else to talk to in Tallahassee, but you know we're, we're preaching to the choir when we speak to them. Uh, so I am now going to hand over to, well actually we're going to watch this video. Just watch the video? Yeah, okay. watch the video. Can I just, we're going to watch the video first. <laughs> and then I'm going to embarrass you people. Oh. So um, I, just by way of introduction, this is our own uh, Queen, Queen Lucy, I'm sorry, Warrior Princess no, Lucy. No. <laughs> um, presenting an amazingly powerful and data-driven smackdown of Permitless Carry at the Broward Legislative um, Delegation meeting. And then um, following this are the moments when um, our Broward Sheriff, our Sheriff boss lady. Uh, Tony, got up and was speaking, during which time our badass boss lady Susan completely went rogue. And somebody asked the legislators, do you have any questions? And she said, I have a question. <laughs> Sheriff Tony, how do you feel about purple and scary? <laughs> oh my God. So um, this is Lucy's presentation about, just listen to the data points that she drops about this. 